Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough with the tournament waiting for the expert division in the Sakura Hills 9 Hole Cup. The video is sponsored by Gold Clash and Play Damage. And before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also visit goldclashtommy.com for more Gold Clash related content for free. Last but not least, get the best guides on the market by going to patreon.com slash goldclashtommy. Link directly in the description down below. Can we get this video up to 300 thumbs up? That would be very awesome and I would be very thankful. Follow the info box on the right hand side to get the club distance and the elevation adjustment combined with what type of ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Obviously you don't have to follow what I do suggest but there is always a plan behind it. I'm trying to go with this playthrough only free to play balls as I do believe we have a big tournament coming up and I do feel that we can get very very good score without going with the with any special balls in my opinion so that is my focus here please let me know if there is any questions you can send an email at any point to support at goldclashtommy.com but enough talking about that and let's go to hole number one For hole number one, we're gonna play with the apocalypse if possible. We're using as much top spin possible and as much side spin to the right possible. And now I'm looking to have the blue ring by the bunker combined with the blue ring by the rough on the right. And that's going to be approximately plus a 10 yard mark with our apocalypse. Obviously, if you don't have the apocalypse in level five plus, then you're gonna have to start in maximum distance with, for an example, Apocalypse level four. But the Apocalypse here would be brilliant as it does have the distance, it does also have the curl because we're gonna use max curl to the right and here I'm using three rings of overpower. Thing to have in mind with the overpower is that you could technically reduce a little bit just to make sure that we're not getting that super close to the bunker because honestly, if we do drop directly into the bunker, that's going to be absolutely terrible because now when we end up uh, here to 360, uh, 376 yard mark, we're gonna have almost a dead on straight headwind. I would say it's, I, I don't think you can come closer to a straight head, uh, to a more of a straight headwind here. And the thing that we're looking for here now is you don't use any spin if uh, you don't use any side spin if possible. And I think that's the thing that makes this shot become dropping right hand side. I've been playing this shot afterwards, been playing it without spin, and has been dropping right at pin all the time. Now, when we do play in a straight headwind, we do have a lot of room for error. We can go a little bit short or a little bit long with our adjustment, but we will still get the ball to drop. It's just going to be less or ha less hard or harder with the, uh, coming at the pin. Adjustment is going to be approximately 80% slider uh, with a plus 10 adjustment. But again, stay away from the side spin. Otherwise, I do believe we're going to see ourselves being, a, you know, on the side of the cup and that's just so unnecessary so no side spin only back spin ball guideline just slightly through the hole and then this ball it then this one is going to drop yeah every time with a perfect For hole number two, the game makers have been giving us a very tough wind as we do have a direct tailwind, which means if we're gonna play with the sniper, we are going to go in between clubs if we're not using a win five ball. But I don't want to use a win five ball in the nine hole cup. We're spending enough of them in the bigger tournament here in the nine hole cup, we're going free to play. So here I'm using the Guardian max back spin and we're gonna go with 0 0.2 bars of right spin. And then we're looking for the uh, the tip of the ball guideline to be basically be one green square before the pin in this example but we're gonna tweak that and you're gonna notice here that we come in with a direction that i do like but we are definitely a bit too high so the thing that i would recommend is to add spin max back spin 0 0.2 back uh, side spin to the right and then you move so you have the tip of the ball guideline to be two and a half green square before the pin because the tailwind will push this ball like a lot and that's going to be very hard to compensate you may be wondering why don't i go back with a grizzly or you know a b52 or a goliath <laughs> it's because there are so many inconsistent spots there so I, if i can go with the guardian here that's going to be my play trying to get an hole in one on this par three that generally plays very easy but with tailwind it definitely doesn't play as easy as we're used to max plus 20 Guardian, max back spin, 0 0.2 right side spin, play with a kingmaker to reduce the win. For 
Round number three, we're gonna go aggressive. I would recommend to play with a power three ball. So a Titan or a Kingmaker here, use as much top spin possible and do not go with any side spin. So six bars of top spin or like 4.8 uh, bars on top spin and then stretch out your club to max. You would do want to see the tip of the ball guideline to be just by the edge of the rough on the left hand side. Maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment and then we're gonna push up to absolute max. Max overpower is uh, the key then for the pro and obviously that's going to be uh, difficult sometimes where you do hit a double great right or double great left but we do want to push this drive as hard as possible to get into uh, short iron range or to be a long iron range. If I'm going to choose I want to choose to be in minimum distance long iron instead of being in a maximum distance short iron because this spot here is not really uh, yeah, anything that I would like to be in. So I'm trying to find just absolute max here and now I'm going to play this one max plus 10 but you're gonna notice that I'm gonna have to add a little bit more here because I'm not really getting the ball to compensate for the wind as I want to. So I'm using spin to pin and then using a little side spin here but this one would be better off to offset approximately one uh, side spin to the left because you can see we're approximately one one and a half green square to the right of the pin which not really can consider to be close. But hold number three it's not really a par five where I expect us to get a bunch of drops. Sure it's a big bonus but I do feel that the odd, uh, but especially hold number six as a par five is a very good opportunity. So for hole number four we're gonna play with the sniper and here I'm using the top of the red ring by the rough line and then I'm playing in this example now with four bars of backspin one bar of left spin is because I don't want the ball to roll too hot. I came too hot with three bars of backspin and therefore I played four bars but look at the tip of the ball guideline is basically going through the dark green square row coming in towards the pin in that direction. Now we're going to play mid plus 10, which is 8.6 rings for 8.6 miles per hour, so 1 to 1. The thing that we do have here though is that this ball is going to come too short. It is a perfect line though towards the pin, as you can see here, and it turns obviously too much left because it doesn't have the speed. So the thing that I want you to do, same landing position but we're changing spin to 3.5 backspin, 1 bar of left spin, then we're gonna be very close if not getting that ball in the hole. I do believe that hole number four is a hole that we shouldn't be surprised if we're gonna see our opponents making a hole in one. So we really need to focus and get it ourselves. For hole number five we're going to just transport our ball down as close to the rough line possible or not really as close down possible we at least want to get past the beginning of the bunker on the top right. So we add as much top spin possible in this case 5.8 top spin and I'm also using as much side spin to the left possible. Adjustment is going to be max plus 10 is what we're gonna do and then I go with three rings of overpower with 25% uh, of the ball outside the adjustment ring to the left and now we're looking to get a yardage that's going to get up around 365 to 375 somewhere around that 374 was this drive now second shot we're gonna go for a rough bump and this wind is brilliant when it comes to going for this rough bump because we're not gonna go from adjusting from a higher to a lower point or lower to a higher uh, or lower to a higher point so this is just going to be fairly easy to get this one dialed in one bar left spin two bars of top spin ball guidelines slightly through the hole with the bottom of the yellow ring just by the sand and now in this case I'm going to adjust four and a half uh, rings which is going to be uh, fairly close to be 25% slider because 4.2 is minimum distance with a minus 30% so you're gonna play around 25% slider and then you're going to play that one with minus 30% and then obviously boom <laughs> it's uh, this is a good chance 
but it's not going to be like a, a an absolute drop all the time but it's important to note down the yardage that from 374 we're gonna play four and a half rings which is 25 percent slider minus 30 percent For hole number six, we're gonna play on the right hand side here, and we're gonna use as much uh, top spin here possible generally. But when we do have a straight tailwind, we're gonna use four and a half bar top spin. That's going to be enough. We're also using half a bar of side spin to the right, looking to see that the second bounce is clearly over the rough. Now we're going to adjust with a maximum distance with a ten percent over adjustment, and rely at, on the fact that. But the ball guideline is going to generally be longer and that's because you get an extended ball guideline due to playing in tailwind. So after the first bounce we will see this ball bounce a little bit longer than expected and we're looking to get this ball to be outside the shadow on the other side. And you're gonna see the shadow there, that shadow there. We're looking to roll a, a, far bit, like a fair bit uh, further than being in it. That's a 374 yard mark. The thing that we do need to have in mind here that if we do go short, which could be like a 3.65, we're gonna play from maximum distance. And if we do go to 3.75, it's gonna be more towards the mid distance area. No matter what though, you're gonna apply spin to pin. So spin to pin, and here I'm using one bar of side spin to the left. And honestly, I think we could stay away from using one bar of side spin and just play it pretty much clean, but then we could danger the bunker with a great left. So in the end, it's up to you what you wanna do here, but it's not wrong to have a side spin, but the side spin is what's going to make this ball miss left here. So I adjust here max plus 10 is what I'm doing, and we see the ball bounce in the rough and we just miss on the left hand side, and obviously, you know, a little bit less back, uh, a little bit less side spin because we can't really what can i say uh, we can't really let the ball fly longer because then we're gonna miss the rough so we do need to compensate with spin so we do get the ball to go in the direction that we want to but no matter what though this is a really good chance making an albatross here and an albatross in a nine hole cup could most definitely become a massive thing in a tiebreaker For all seven in the final of the par threes, we are going to attempt a rough bump. And the reason for that is because it's our, the best way to make a hole in one by far. Because bouncing on the left side fairway is just going to bring, you know, different type of result all the time. In the ring, by the edge of the rough, bottom of the yellow ring by uh, the sand. And then we're going to play 2.2 backspin and half a bar of side spin to the right. Here I'm trying to have a... Uh, what will it be 12 or 1 pull angle but i would I, I would suggest you to try to play with a straight pull angle like a 12 so not trying to favor any side because it does not give us that give us the same effect with right to left wind as it does left to right wind and the reason for that is because when we adjust from the right side more to the right we go from a higher sort of like a lower to a higher point slightly and then when we drop down into the bunker it kind of gonna compensate each other out and that's going to make you have a straight pull angle instead of doing as we do in pro where we do with a pretty heavy 1159 for falling down into the sand you do play with a mummy ball you know centur any type of wind for power three you don't have to have any side spin so like a vintage mummy ball would honestly be the best and then last but not least adjustment minimum distance with a 10 percent over adjustment but power one ball setting so not power three as we do have the mummy and centurion and kingmakers and everything like that you play power one ball setting to get the correct adjustment and then you're gonna have it tweaked to 0 0.2 decimals less adjusted than what we do here in the video and then i do believe we're gonna see plenty of drops with this adjustment For hole number eight, I'm going to play a very conservative drive, but you're gonna notice where, where I'm getting towards uh, when it comes to this hole here on hole number eight. So first we go with the quarterback and I'm using three bars of side spin to the right. Eventually I'm going to add one bar of the top spin as well as we do want to get a little bit of a more distance than what we're having here. We also need to have in mind that this is a quarterback level 10. 
So those of you playing with a quarterback level 8 should add one extra bar of topspin. So you play with two bars of topspin instead. I adjust 1 to 1 here, uh, which is very close to max plus 10. Uh, so a 1 to 1 adjustment. And unfortunately, I do hit great left. Obviously, a perfect is what we're looking for. But a great left or great right will still be okay and will not clip the rough. And that's the beauty with the quarterback as it has such a great accuracy that we won't have to be scared about that. Now you can see I went pretty short and that is not to go for the dunk in straight tailwind because I'm actually going to bounce my ball up towards the pin. This is a way that I've been playing before in tour play when I feel, felt uncomfortable going for the dunk. So I'm using three bars of left spin and you can see that I leave the ball guideline approximately one green square short of pin. And now we're going to play with a 10% over adjustment and based obviously on the club distance we are in. So if you are in let's say max distance you play max if you are in mid you play mid and that is something that you do need to have in mind so we hit perfect and you see it bounce nicely and it takes the roll there hit the pin and fall down it will come in a bit too hot sometimes not a bit too hot but it will come in hot as we do have tailwind but this is a very nice approach to play it gives you a conservative drive you don't have to go with much curl and it could technically be a very consistent way for you to get the eagle here on hole number eight which is in my opinion played a bit tough if you do want to go for the dunk you play minus 10 percent for the dunk but i would recommend you not to do that actually if you don't feel very comfortable with it because the risk of hitting the pin on this dunk is in my opinion uh, more frequently happening than on other holes. So that is at least my thought here for hole number eight. So hole number nine, in my opinion, is pretty boring. First and foremost, you're gonna play with the driver that gives you the most top spin and power possible. In my uh, boat, uh, like in my bag i do have the extra mile level nine and then i'm using that if that's not the club that gives you the most top spin and power then don't use that then use another club so i'm using a power five ball a berserker ball which you can win for free in the golden shot you add as much top spin possible and then try to get this ball as far down the freaking fairway possible and from this distance here now you would be able to play with whatever wood club you want to play with you could play with the guardian you can play with a sniper you can play with a cataclysm you can play with whatever one but to just to give you a suggestion in info box i choose the cataclysm just because that will cover even those of you that has very low level drivers might not reach as far as here in the video now you're gonna see uh, the second shot that is going to be from the rough and the reason I want to show you this second shot and not a normal second shot because the second shot is pretty much straightforward we're not really going to do anything we're just gonna land it on the fire on the left and get to the green basically like we're gonna do here now but the thing that I want to show with the rough firing is that even though I get into the rough with my drive on the left with a really bad drive I can still reach to the green without going with overpower. And that is why I want you to go full blast with your drive, even though there is a little risk to go into the rough. So I really wanted to put the focus on this because honestly, the only thing we're looking for is to get the ball to green. So if you would be having a wood club, you would play the same. You play with the ball to the green, take the eagle. And now we play with the rough iron to the green, take the eagle. I'm not going to try some stuff that I did try on stream with sandbub and stuff like that because we don't have the time to dial that stuff in. Sure, if you're looking to go for, you need an albatross um, for hole nine to win a gold. Yeah, maybe we could go and try some unorthodox sandbobs or something like that but in the end we're playing for the eagle here if you haven't got the drops before this hole then you haven't done what you're supposed to do so from the rough from the fairway from wherever you will be able to reach for the green in two to take the eagle and that's what we're looking for on hole number nine thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for expert division with the tournament win for the Sakura nine hole cup the video is sponsored by golf clash and play demic and i hope you enjoyed it if you enjoyed it don't forget to hit thumbs up on the video if you do have any questions support at goldclashtommy.com thank you once again for watching and good luck in the secure hills nine hole cup